Welcome to the episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm gonna be going over my review of the Fixation Sparta Full Carbon Fork. So if you're looking for an awesome carbon upgrade or you're just looking to add basically every feature and mount possible to your current bike, this video is for you, so stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the specs and the features, the price, ride quality, and my final thoughts on the Fixation Sparta Fork. If you're looking to pick one of these up, the link is in the description below. So first off, let's get into the specs and the features. This fork comes with essentially every modern mount possible that you can essentially have on a single fork. It is a full carbon tapered fork with dynamo front hub routing, three pack mount so you can run a salsa anything cage or just a standard bottle cage and run water on that as well. Fender mounts, it is flat mount for the disc brakes, but obviously you can get an adapter for post mount as well as it is a 12 millimeter through axle design. So this really ticks all the boxes as far as what you can essentially get on any fork that comes on any bike today. So if you have a bike that does run a tapered steer tube, you can essentially add front pack mounts onto your bike as well as dynamo routing and everything else that I mentioned before. Now in this video footage, you're gonna see the black fork. That's how it looks stock. And a lot of this other footage is gonna be painted because I did paint that on my custom Poseidon X build. And if you wanna watch that, you can subscribe to this channel and check out that playlist as well. So a lot of this footage, it is gonna be custom painted, which I did. So you cannot uh, unfortunately order the Sparta fork this way from the factory. Next, as far as the weight goes, they claim this at 500 grams uncut. So that is a pretty lightweight fork for all this utility that you do get out of it, since obviously they do need to reinforce it slightly to carry the extra weight on the fork. And as for tire clearance, they rate this at a 700 by 42 in a 700 C and a 650 by 50 C on the website, but we'll be getting into that a little bit later in my experience. And lastly, it does have a 45 millimeter rake and they do rate the three packs mounts to only carry a maximum of three kilograms. So make sure to double check that if you're loading this thing up that your one cage can handle that kind of weight and that you don't overload it and you make sure to weigh your entire system that's hanging on the bike. So now let's get into ride quality. I rode this on my Poseidon X, which did come stock with a carbon fiber fork with an aluminum steer tube. And I rode the stock version of that bike, which is quick release. Now I put a ton of miles on this fork. I basically, when I did my custom build, put this fork on right away. I could definitely feel a little bit lighter front end and a really responsive, stiff, smooth ride. And I know saying those two words together doesn't really make sense, but I mean it in the sense of it is responsive enough to where I don't get a lot of wheel flex when really torquing on the bars or going on something really rough, but it does seem to dampen out a little bit more vibration than the initial stock fork did. Granted, I am running a bigger tire than the stock bike, so that could be part of it, but I've been really happy with this fork. As far as ride quality goes, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. Now let's get into price. This fork retails currently at $420. Now that sounds like a lot for a fork, but if you really look into the market, typically forks with three pack mounts like this are usually at least $500 or more. So keep that in mind, this is actually a pretty affordable option and it still has all the mounts. There are some forks that are out there for $500 that only have bottle mounts on the fork so you couldn't run a three pack mount and carry as much weight as the fixation. So remember that there are steel versions of a similar style fork, which obviously might be cheaper. Sometimes they're the same price, but obviously they can be a lot heavier. And if you're running a modern carbon or aluminum bike, a steel fork would look kind of funny. So now let's get into my final thoughts. First off, I want to say that the tire clearance is definitely on the conservative side, and I get why most companies do this. I have run a 650 by 2.2 on the front and had no rubbing issues. It was a Maxxis Icon when I did my bike packing video and I had no rubbing issues whatsoever. It is obviously a tighter clearance, but in California, it's pretty dry. There's not a lot of mud. So if there was a lot of mud, I probably would have downsized to a 2.1, but I would say confidently you can run a 2.1. 2.2 is really gonna depend on how wide your rim is and how much it's gonna spread out your front tire. Now, as far as 700 C clearance, I tested a 40 with no problem. I think a 45 would fit in here fine, again, depending on rim width. I did throw in a 50 C, which didn't fit at all. And this is where I have the one problem with this fork based on the design of it. Now, overall, I think aesthetically it looks great, but the only thing I don't like is I wish in the fork crown they rounded off where the basically tire sits, which will give you a little bit more shoulder clearance, especially for your 700 C wheels. 650s, it still sits low enough, even in a 2.2 that this isn't an issue, but if you're starting to creep up there at the 742 or 45 size, 
especially with a, a wider rim, it's gonna pull your tire out slightly and that's where I think you're gonna rub. It's just because of the kick down and the angle that they set that at. If they were to round that out a little bit more, I think you'd have a little bit more clearance and they might be able to sneak up to that bigger size with more mud clearance. And the only other thing I wish they would have done is supplied a plug for the dynamo routing. I just didn't want any dirt or water to get in there. I found a random plug that ended up fitting in there. So I have a little rubber grommet on mine that you can see just to basically plug up the hole when it's not in use. So that's kind of a trivial thing, but it would have been nice. So realistically, those are the only two faults I can really see if you're trying to really push that tire limit, as well as they do recommend a certain fender if you want to run a fender on this. And I believe it's probably because of the design of the fork crown, but that's my opinion. So overall, I would definitely recommend this fork to anybody. The one thing you're going to want to check before that is you want to check the rake, which is essentially the angle that the fork kind of kicks out. It is at a 45. On my Poseidon, it did shorten up what seems like the toe overlap. They don't actually give the fork rake on Poseidon's website, which is unfortunate. Most bikes I've seen are either a 45 or a 50 millimeter rake. So I'm assuming the stock Poseidon was closer to a 50 or at a 50. So it did decrease the wheelbase, which made it snappier feeling, but it also introduced a little bit of toe overlap sometimes. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it. You want to make sure to check your stock fork rake on your bike. If you have plenty of room and you actually want to increase the turn in on your bike or shorten the wheelbase, having a slightly shorter rake might not be so bad, but make sure to double check that. I'm definitely not an expert as far as that goes. So I hope you like this video. Comment below if you have any other questions regarding the Sparta fork. I love to answer all you guys' comments. As well as make sure to hit that notification bell so you can see all the videos that I put out here on this channel every single week. As well as subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are all in the description below. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in.